Oh, this is this could be something. Like this could just be something more than just a side hustle that I do for fun, right? We're kind of like positioned in a way to praise the song because you don't want to hurt the relationship with the label. I'll be honest, like it's not my thing at all. So you made a video about Ukraine. Yeah, I mean, I mean, politics is they're they're everywhere. It's gonna be like a four hour long video. <laughs> <laughs>We are joined today on the very first episode of the Metal Bird Podcast with none other than the metalcore juggernaut known as Hardcore, but you really know him as Bogdan. He is yeah. one that right, right, right. He is one of the most special music reactor and reviewers dedicated to genuine reactions with no fluff, but also is famous for his try not to headbang challenges and the Hardcore Awards. So this man knows a thing or two when it comes to metalcore, but I would argue. He knows even more when it comes to content creation. So here he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Bogdan. How's it going, bro? Hello, hello. How's it going with you? It's going fine here. Yeah. How about you? <laughs> uh, honestly, this is the very first podcast episode. We were just talking earlier that I'm glad that I have you here because we've hung out a few times. So if like I screw up or if the audio settings or something goes out of whack, then at least I can like fumble with you. Oh, you know? Of course. <laughs> also the vocal all, all you want <laughs> yeah, there definitely will be also my voice is a little bit scratchy i think uh because october was such a crazy month in terms of like music and stuff and just constantly putting out so much content like i'm sure you can agree yeah i've mm -hmm. i've recently been feeling kind of sick i think there's like a bug going around because all of my friends are also sick and like my family's kind of sick so my voice is not the best either but you know Dude, okay, we might have the same thing. Like, I've been, yeah, it's, I've been having it for like five days now, but um, I feel like part of it was just also just going too hard with like, yeah, like making content and then also um, going out like Halloween just kind of happened. So I've been very busy socially. Um, but, you know, for you, you've been absolutely crushing it. You have been crushing it, sir, on YouTube. Um, you are getting views, like the same amount of views as people who have like 500, 600,000 subscribers. Like you, your game is amazing. And I think my guess is, you know, you've got great thumbnails, you've got awesome titles. Um, but I think there's two things now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I love to hear you elaborate on this, but I feel like it's also your consistency. You are very, very consistent, and I think you're also honing in on the metalcore audience. Do you agree? Do you see that as well? I I definitely see that for the past year, especially my views kind of like shot up a lot, and I've been getting really like good, consistent views. And I think it has to do with definitely thumbnails. I try to do them uh, as simple as possible with just my big face on the <laughs> side, and then the whatever the content is I'm reacting to. I think I think a good thumbnail is definitely like a big percentage of, of success on YouTube and also titles, of course. Uh, but honestly, to be quite fair with you, like, I, I don't know. I don't know why it's it's doing that. <laughs> See, the I am like the least professional YouTuber out there. I barely ever <laughs> look at my analytics ever. I just look at views and I'm like, oh, okay, this is doing pretty good. <laughs> I honestly think that's a good thing. I don't look at analytics either because like I feel like it's like mentally draining kind of thing. So I stay away from that too. But that's why I felt like that's why I kind of like said this is what I think you're doing that's killing it because sometimes you're you can't really see what you're doing. So like even I can uh, agree with that when I'm putting out content like personally, I think it's good stuff, but I don't know what other people are thinking. Like, sure, I can see the numbers fluctuate, but I think it's good to have an outsider's perspective. So I think like, I don't know, I think you're so fucking consistent, man. And um, it's something like uh, remarkable and like it's I don't know, it's something I hugely respect. You're so on top of everything because this is not only like this is not your full time thing. You're also a graphic designer, too, right? Yes, I just actually finished my work like half an hour ago. <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's YouTube is like a roller coaster because one week you'll be getting all these amazing consistent views and then the next week you're going to be like in the in the hole. Nothing. Nothing's working. Everything's <laughs> bad. Like, oh, my God, I just I just need to quit. 
and it's like it's always like that and it is that's kind of like the reality of of, of being a content creator you just kind of go with the up and downs you know it's it's really hard to to keep up with it sometimes but do your thing <laughs> that's that's what they always say do your thing <laughs> man i i'm so glad that you said that too because um a thing that i like like you know doing this podcast i want to talk to other content creators too because it's good to hear that you're not alone because um when the numbers like go up and down it's such a shitty feeling like i think the past two or three weeks my numbers have been like terrible and like the worst they've been in all year i think and like i'm but i'm putting out like i think good content but like people aren't clicking i'm like what the hell and it's so uh mentally draining i sound like i'm like whining a bit but it's just like um you know you you put in a lot of work and so it's just it's tough the youtube game can be tough for sure absolutely yeah no i mean for the last week i've also been getting kind of lower views than i usually get and it, i think it's i think it's like a, it's like a wave for everyone you know there's there's ups and downs um but i think i think it's like a matter of just finding a perfect formula of a thumbnail a title description whatever you want to like however you want to group it and kind of finding whatever works best and it, it, it's honestly <laughs> sometimes it just doesn't work sometimes it works really great and then it doesn't work the next time and it's like man <laughs> what is this what is this job <laughs> i know i know and it's even weird to call it a job too yeah it's strange but i mean congrats to you for trying something new with this podcast thing it's like you know it, it's like like you said you wanted to speak to a bunch of content creators i think it's a great idea it's just like you know usually it's going to be a bunch of content creators complaining about youtube <laughs> <laughs> right now, I, I yeah i know right well <laughs> i i also want to talk to bands too and like get to know them a little bit better but um you work remotely right doing graphic yep. design yeah so i was you know i've been working remotely since covid too and then i went full-time with youtube but like I, you know, it's the dream. You're working at home and stuff. It's great. Like it sounds great on paper, but then you realize you kind of miss those in-person uh, connections. So um, that's a huge reason why I'm starting this podcast. So like, you know, obviously just to talk to people, network, but also I think it's good for me to actually have conversations and get to know people a little bit better because I kind of miss the water cooler talk from my old job and just shoot the shit <laughs> like drama. I didn't even care about for my old job. Like, <laughs> Susie from HR did what? Like, even though I didn't care at the time, but those little mundane things, I actually li miss a little bit. But yeah. I don't know if no, that's... that's absolutely true. And I, I, I think it's an amazing thing to like, kind of bring back that communication, especially if you're always at home, just in front of your computer talking to yourself. That's, uh, yeah, I know. Like a great way to spice it up. <laughs> I know um yeah you got like the discord community you got youtube comments but it's really uh you know it's not the same as in person kind of thing but you know w when it comes to youtube like obviously we're talking about some of the challenges so like what has been like some of your biggest challenges uh doing your youtube channel huh uh biggest challenges is probably trying new things because i feel like there's there's a big problem with YouTube that you may have encountered before and I'm sure a lot of other content creators have. And it's, you create a niche for yourself, uh, a specific type of content that always gets clicks on your on your channel. And then when you try something different than what you usually do, like 90% of the time, it just tanks. There's, there's no views, there's no comments, nothing. And it's like, usually you put in a lot of, a ton of work into making that thing, whatever that is. And then it doesn't get like properly recognized by the by the audience because the algorithm kind of recognizes, oh, this is a different type of content. I'm not going to recommend it as much. So definitely like trying new things on YouTube is really difficult when you've been doing the same thing for years and haven't really changed much. So that's like the biggest thing for me because I, I want to do different kinds of content, but it's tough. It's it's tough to find that kind of motivation to to you know to break into something different and yeah, it's that that's been my biggest challenge anyway. Do you have any like specific ideas of things that you want to try doing? 
Yeah, I was, I mean, I tried a couple of times to do more like talking type of videos, um, kind of like a voiceover, uh, a voiceover, um, like just pick a topic and talk about it. And it just, it just did not work. And, you know, album reviews, I used to do those a long time ago. It, it's just for some reason, the only thing that works on my channel <laughs> that gets consistent views is reactions, which I mean, it makes sense because it's something I've been doing for the last three years, but like, you know, it's kind of limiting, so oh, to speak. It's very limiting. I can totally relate to that because like reactions are the only thing that really pull in views too. And I try to experiment at least like once a week with like a different kind of video and it's so hit or miss. Sometimes like I think it's a great idea, like 10 bands that age like fine wine because this is a good video to showcase some bands that people might not know that are still killing it it tanked and then i you know it really sucks because i think some of the videos that do really well for me are the rage bait kind of videos it's ones that are like 10 worst songs on best albums and those yep. really those people are like oh what the hell do i see bring the rise and ammo on it so they're going to click on that because i see them in the thumbnail and it works but like like i make other content like i did um oh man yesterday it was like a, a cringe challenge or trying to find the cringiest song ever it was such a fun video. I had such a good time making that video and like people on YouTube were just not clicking on it. Like, no, nah, this is stupid. I, I want to see Metal Bird react to a breakdown for the millionth time. I'm like, oh. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, that's that's true. I mean, for, at least with you, 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 you're actually trying to do all these all these new things, which I think with time will actually help you grow that that kind of niche of your content a bit better. Because I feel like that's how YouTube works. You just you bang something out until it becomes a norm for you. And that's, I guess, uh, when there's going to be a bit of a breakthrough in that kind of department. But yeah, oh, no, yeah. that's yeah, it's it's really important to try new things because if you lock yourself in, it's 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 hell. <laughs> I feel like that's, that's kind of relatable to bands, too. You know, like bands are always like uh, when they go to yep. concerts or something, they always have to play their hits and stuff and like. I can kind of relate to them because like it can get a little bit tiresome after some time. You want to try playing your new songs, but people don't give a shit about it. They want to hear your old stuff. So it's like, just stick to reactions, Metal Bird. That's what we want. Like, or stick to reactions, Bogdan. But like, okay, besides that, you like you got the try not to headbang challenges and stuff. Um, you are like the king of those videos. And also, you are the OG when it comes to Metalcore Awards. Okay, the Hardcore Awards. That you crushed it with that, with the Google Docs and everything. I'm like, I thought it was such a good idea. I'm like, but I can't do it. That is a that is a bogged in thing. But uh, now we got the Nick Nocturnal Award. So don't don't be uh, shocked if you see the Metal Burb Awards too, kind of thing. I, will, I, will. I mean, it's such a great opportunity for like to like summarize the whole year for your for your own audience. It's like, you know, I, I've been doing it for like form like i formatted uh as as the like the audience voting kind of thing for two years i think it's going to be the third one i'm I'm not really sure the the past couple of years have been a haze for me but uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's just hardcore awards i love doing them because it's like this one big video at the end of the year where you put everything best of of, of music and it's, it's like a big celebration awards show you know i love i love that stuff and try not to headbang challenge i mean that's like something that kickstarted my channel. That's something that I did like in 2017, like no face cam, no voice, nothing. It was just me putting together clips from bands. And that's like kind of what started this channel. So I wanted to keep that at least in an annual form. So yeah, those are, those are uh, pretty popular as well. Wow, <laughs> so 2017. Okay. So like, um, what made you kind of want to get into like, you know, the music side of YouTube because or how come not like Minecraft or something? Because I, I've, I've seen you play some Minecraft or uh, yeah, what made you want to just do music? Oh, uh, that's funny because the the channel that I, that is currently my channel, like in Jesus, that's a very loud dog outside. <laughs> uh, in like 2012, I actually did a couple of minecraft videos but it was it was just like oh god <laughs> <laughs> they're deleted from the platform you can never see them again which is kind of a shame uh but that's what i started with a very long time ago but like 
then I lost interest, wasn't doing anything. And then in 2017, I kind of came back to YouTube with some music ideas, I guess. And I don't know. It was just at the time I was, um, I think 2015 was the time where I was getting into metalcore properly. Because before that, I was mainly listening to like rock music and alternative rock. So very far from what I usually listen to nowadays. But I feel like that period was when I I was really into music. You know, it's kind of weird to say you're into music because everybody is into music. But like that year, th that period, 2015, 2017, I was like really passionate about metal, rock music. And I guess I just wanted to, to make something cool for YouTube because I, I was like, you know, it's been a while. That that's kind of how it started, and uh, I also made a couple of memes. I remember about suicide silence. Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you remember that in 2017 they dropped a song called Doris. Which oh yeah, those, like the teehees. <laughs> yeah, yes. the teehee. Yeah. Oh god, <laughs> it, it, I I memed the shit out of that song. I milked it so hard, and that's like that kind of like categorized me as a whole as a YouTuber in 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 those beginning years. I I would struck strike a gold mine in terms of like content i would like uh find a cool concept and i would milk the the hell out of it i would just keep posting it in all the different ways possible and um yeah that's that's me in 2017. <laughs> well i think that's what you gotta do right you gotta like i see other youtubers like outside of music like i don't know fitness or like video games they their videos are just kind of plateauing but then they have this one video that blows up and then they milk the shit of it because that's the hot topic. But then it becomes like, okay, how do you move on from that? Because you can't be doing that content forever. People want something else. So you yep. constantly have to evolve your content a little bit. So it's really cool that you started off doing like the memes of suicide sounds and then doing reactions. And now you're still gradually just like blowing up too. But yeah, I mean, like one thing about one more thing about that, like, like you said, it's important to grow and improve and adapt especially and i didn't do that i was i kept milking it until it stopped getting views and i just had a mess i, I think in the year of 2018 i uploaded a total of like 12 videos to youtube and, and that's that's when it should have all ended but you know in 2019 i kind of started doing reaction videos because that was like the hot thing then here i am <laughs> i guess <laughs> Dude, it's so it's so crazy. I, I I know. I think 2019 or I think I started in 2019 too. Cause yeah, we were both watching Truant, and I yeah. saw I saw potential with the content. Cause I always hated reaction videos, and then I saw Truant doing it, and I I kind of understood them. So when he stopped, I'm like, okay, this might be a cool way for me to hop on in and voice out my opinions about music. Yeah, but did you ever feel like oh? Like this guy's not reacting to music that I want to react to. I'll do it instead of him. <laughs> yep. Because yep, you kind of like fill that gap with yourself. It's it's a weird way of thinking about it, but yeah. I know. I really wanted to showcase the bands that I listen to and like um, talk about the more niche bands. I've always been really into more niche metalcore prog bands and. Um, I think people realize that now and that's why they're so shocked when I never listened to a Slipknot album or I never even <laughs> listened to a Linkin Park album, even though I know, obviously know who they are. But I just, you know, I'm like, but have you ever heard of a Mia Venera landscape like that? <laughs> yeah. So I was into weird shit because I used to go into like the deep webs of like metalcore music, like sites and stuff and just find like what people are talking about in these niche groups. But um, actually, I want to know what got you specifically into metalcore because um, yeah, you were saying rock and alternative, like what are like some bands, like what is like the first band that got you into like rock and then how'd you get introduced to the metal core side of things? Okay. So first band that got me into rock music, like the heavier side of music was in, was when I was like six years old and I, my cousin kept playing Linkin Park for me. And so Linkin Park is my first band that I've listened to. And that's kind of where it all stemmed from. I, I was listening to stuff like Rise Against. Uh, Love that band so mm -hmm. much. I, I was listening to um, 30 Seconds to Mars, Gu Guilty Pleasure. Oh, they're so good. Uh, <laughs> Even though Jared Leto's a weirdo, but yeah. He is, he is a weirdo, but back then, oh, that was my shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. There was this band called Skillet. I mean, they still are around, um, but I used to listen to them a lot too. And then in 2015, one of my best friends introduced me to this little band called the Fmice and Men. 
and he he played me a song by them called um glass hearts and it was off of the restoring forest album and i was just like blown away i was like whoa what is this <laughs> that's sort of when i started listening to to metalcore metalcore but actually before that i think the very first metalcore song that i've ever heard in my life was hand of blood by bull fm my valentine yes 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 because, yes because that song was in um burnout revenge it? And Need for Speed. Oh, I was think it? it? Was in Need for Speed as well? Yeah, because I was. I remember that song was from a game, and I was like, "Oh, this shit slaps." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's 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 where it all started. That's where that's where I turned to to this side of music, I guess. Dude, that was the same thing as me. Video games have done so much for my music taste, like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, like a Need for Speed, Burnout kind of games. Um, but yeah, like for me, I got into metalcore like um through i don't know i used to listen to nirvana and foo fighters i was such a grunge kid man i was wearing like plaid yeah. baggy shirts and <laughs> i man i didn't i bought this shirt in mexico uh <laughs> it was a kurt cobain shirt and th the words on it it was just like a photo of kurt cobain like a big image of him and then it said like i hate myself and i want to die <laughs> and i i wore that <laughs> All the time in grade nine, and I'm like, oh, this guy's such a weirdo. I don't know why I was wearing that shirt, but anyway, um, I don't know. I just kind of like the more aggressive stuff in music. And um, my brothers, I had two older brothers, and they were a big help from getting me into music. And um, they would show me like uh, Rise Against Two, also, and uh, Thrice that had this one song called Deadbolt, and it had this really sick riff, and I was like. 13 years old or something I'm like whoa what is this and like they're still my favorite band today but then yeah burnout I remember hearing hand of blood I'm like this song is fucking amazing that's still my favorite bullet from my valentine song like, that is such a good song it's still a banger man it's still a freaking it's banger okay you know the, talking about like challenges of YouTube how about on the flip side what is like some of your proudest achievements from your YouTube channel oh that probably has to be the fact that i was invited to go to the to the festival in sweden this this year that was like that's like my highest point of of, of making content because like it's one thing when you just like sit here and make videos every day it's another thing when someone reaches out to you and like yo come over to, to sweden and like hang out with us and it's like whoa me making videos in my bedroom led to this and it's like <laughs> damn okay so I think that was, that's like the first the first point where I realized, oh, this is, this could be something like this could just be something more than just a side hustle that I do for fun. Right. So, um, yeah, that's like my proudest point. The fact that I kind of grown to that mark. Hopefully there's more out there. But um, I mean, other things is definitely my discord community, because I, I often think about like, dude, if there was there was no discord uh like there would have been no community for me like yeah there'd be people who regularly comment on my videos like i'm sure you can understand that as well because you also have a, a discord server like having that like close kind of community with like inside memes and whatnot is like so so important and it's like you created it it's like whoa <laughs> dude I, that is actually uh my answer to the question too is like the the discord community is something that i'm mind blown to because before this i didn't know what like discord was and i know like other youtubers were doing discord so <clears throat> i kind of like looked into it i'm like okay i gotta learn discord so i just went with the flow got you know a whole bunch of my patrons to go on it now it's just public to anyone really but um it, it was just so cool to actually get to know these people uh, and their personalities and also yeah we share memes and I feel like these people actually know my sense of humor and the people on YouTube I don't really think grasp who I am really but the discord server is a lot more special in that regard because yeah we like shoot the shit we talk we have um yeah we we have like a mental health channel because like in the first week of doing the discord I'm like okay I need to set something up where people can vent because I think it's really important because like I don't want people to just like laugh I want people to really open up and be vulnerable when they need to so I set the mental chel uh, mental health mental health <laughs> channel and dude it just it was crazy to see so many people open up right away and you know actually becoming or bonding 
over some similar issues that people are having because yeah no one is really alone in some of their feelings so it's really cool to see that and like holy shit i <laughs> I, it sounds like like a little bit egotistical, but like holy shit, I created that. I created this. I like, <laughs> like it, it, so the, I totally agree. That is one of the be best achievements I've done too. But like the fact that you went to like Sweden to do that is awesome. And I know we've already talked about it, but you know the people listening haven't really heard about. It, but you know, um, you got to interview some bands. Like the traveling was like a little bit rocky, from what I remember, yeah. but. <laughs> I don't know if you want to like talk about your experience a little bit more and like, I mean, uh, it was like the first ever trip trip that I've had in, in a, in a bunch of years. Like before that I was just here in Toronto the whole time, high school, college work. And this was like the first time I actually got out of the country to like go do something. And so it was definitely stressful also because, you know, I was kind of going there on the premise that I was going to, you know, interview some bands as well and it was like i've never done this before like <laughs> they're all they're all like famous people and i like i listen to their music like i don't want to fanboy over them but like it, it was just a lot and also like yeah the like you said the traveling was really really rocky for me <laughs> my flight to to stockholm got canceled when i was stuck in berlin so um thankfully i had i had uh, have really good friends in berlin who helped me but you know there was a lot of stress in it for sure. Uh, but I think once I got over that kind of hurdle of getting there and being there, I think that's uh, that's when I started feeling a little bit more uh, good about it. But it was just it's it's a high five summer fest, uh, which is an annual thing that they do in Stockholm for metalcore uh, deathcore bands. And so they just kind of emailed me out of nowhere. I was like, yo, I want to come. <laughs> that's so sick, dude. Uh, and yeah, I think, I think don't don't take my word on this, but next year they are planning to do something similar with uh, with more YouTubers. So I think that's really cool that like the the music industry is kind of turning to us. It's like yo, these these people exist, and we can use them as free advertisement. <laughs> and I think it's it's really something uh, something to look out for in the coming years, like labels and and festival organizers working closer. You know, Hardcore Keem is oh. hosting a festival. Like, that's crazy, you know? Yeah. Like, you, you, a couple of years ago, you wouldn't think about, like, anything like this between a music, like, a group of, like, labels, artists, and, like, some guys that make random videos on, on the internet, that kind of partnership, and here we are, so... Yeah, it's great. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Yeah, Keem is absolutely killing it. He's a social media machine. Um, but I hate the word, but really, you know, we're not just YouTubers. We're influencers. Yeah. It's we are. it's such a lame word, but it's true. Like, you know, a lot of our opinions can influence some of our audience into or like our music taste and stuff. So like it, finally it's great that labels are recognizing us taking you to friggin festivals taking you to different countries is just mind-blowing it is by the way if rise records epitaph records or whoever come on hook me up let's go on <laughs> let's go to italy or something that'd be so sick but you know talking about labels it's really cool that they're working with us and like seeing what we bring to the table but, you know, I've mentioned it to you before my feelings on this, but how do you feel about, you know, labels now working with reactors and sending songs early to remove the copyright? Because I think one of the, the faults in that is that we're kind of like positioned in a way to praise the song because you don't want to hurt the relationship with the label, but you also need to be true to yourself. So how do you really position yourself? in that kind of way that's very true that's a very like good way of thinking about it because because there's that relationship you're kind of have an incentive to be positive about something and it's 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 really hard because sometimes i'll be honest like it's not my thing at all uh, but like i feel like i have to do it to keep up the good relationship with the with the label um and it's it's weird but I've kind of learned to just 
overcome that feeling. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of strange because um, I used to do like paid reactions a long time ago for smaller bands, like just to feature them on the channel. And I've stopped doing it, that because I kind of just realized that it's it's not really healthy to like take money for something. And then you kind of feel like you, you have to be positive about it. Like you, you kind of feel like you, they'd feel bad if they paid for something. And it's a similar thing with labels too. Uh, but in my experience, they don't really care <laughs> as long hmm. as you as long as you don't like hate <laughs> the band like personally or something. But yeah, it's it's definitely there's definitely something there to incentivize you to be a little bit more um, positively receptive to these. I don't know. I've just I've just kind of been trying to stay a bit more critical because I feel couple of years back i noticed uh, or a year back i noticed that i was just liking everything even though it wasn't quite my thing so now i'm trying my best to like explain my feelings towards a, a song or another like truthfully to how i how i think of it right even if it's sent through by a label that kind of thing this so. and this is why i like your reactions and i think this is why your audience really likes your reactions too is because people crave that authenticity you know, there's only so many times that if someone keeps seeing someone like every song, like something's up a little bit. And like, sure, there's like um, YouTubers like Kia Jeebs. Um, do you ever watch him, Kia Jeebs? He's an old man composer. That's his like video title. He, do he does more like prog kind of stuff, I guess. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, he talks about videos. He makes videos saying like, oh, I, you know, I don't really feel inclined to make criticism because like, you know, it's their art form. I'm just here to kind of break it down. And I totally see that argument, too. But I think there's something to be said, especially if you're well versed in music or if you know a lot of music like you, you too, Bogdan, like, you know, so many bands. So you have credibility with your opinions. But I think criticism can go a long way and help provide feedback because um, a lot of these bands before us, like before reactors, were just kind of using um, websites and stuff, but you don't really know the person behind the website, behind the review. But I think us, we, you get to know our personality, you get to know our taste a little bit and you build that trust. And I think even then our criticism is even more valuable. And that's if you're respectful, like if you're kind of like a dickhead, like, oh, this yeah. song is shit, like then, OK, like you're not a good reviewer. But if you can provide some quality feedback, then I, I think that does a lot. And like, dude, some of the fan bases cannot handle it. I think bands can handle it better than fan bases. <laughs> but like you you say sure. one negative thing about like a <laughs> Laura Shore song, holy shit or something like it, uh, it goes. People go absolutely nuts, but they do. <laughs> How do you deal with YouTube comments? Like, I remember you saying you read all of them. And I'm like, I'm shocked that you read all of them, man. I have to, man. It's like, it's a, it's a little notification on my phone. I have to read it, you know? It's like, <laughs> someone someone took the time out of their day to, to, to write me a couple of words. Like, I have to. And most of the time, it's like, yo, react to this band. <laughs> but sometimes it'd be actually interesting ideas and thoughts about a, a single song that I'm reacting to or criticism. I really love reading criticism comments because, you know, I think they, they provide so much more value than, than someone saying like, Oh, I love your video. Like it sounds kind of like an asshole thing to say, but that's like kind of true. <laughs> like criticism about your videos or criticism about yeah. the song. Yeah. Specifically criticism about what I'm doing. And oh. I feel like sometimes it would just be like, just straight up like dumb hate. Uh, but sometimes it'd be something really like, like actual thoughtful, interesting. And, um, I take that, like, I take that and I try to like, think about ways to improve something. I, I think a long time ago, someone told me about like fucking camera ISO, whatever, cause my videos were super grainy and I was like, oh shit, you're right. And yeah, stuff like that sometimes is really helpful. I kind of lost my train of thought. Well, <laughs> dude, your camera quality is amazing. You took that advice and you use it because look at look at my camera quality in comparison to yours. Yours is like yours looks good too. I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm, maybe it's the lighting or something. But yeah, no, like I feel like in terms of like quality, you're absolutely crushing it from audio. Another thing is your audio is really good and that's really hard for me to get and like I've I've seen criticism too and I value that criticism where it's just like hey dude 
pop the the filter on your shore or something because like it's game it's a little too bassy i'm like oh shit that's a good that's good feedback i'll try that but i don't know at the end of the day when i see a lot of like i don't know certain criticism i kind of just like don't i just like troll with them back i think someone <laughs> someone said they don't they didn't like my video or something and like be better and i just said like you're right. I will be better. I'm going to do a second part of this video and make it even stupider just for you or something. Like, I just oh, kind of yeah. like, I don't know. I double down on them. Yeah. I like to do that sometimes. I think like the, one of the dumbest things that I've read this year was it was, um, it was a reaction to one of the motionless and white singles. And I think I, I wasn't really happy with the song. I think I didn't really like it. Uh, and one of the comments was, clearly you don't like this band because they paint their nails and i'm like <laughs> yes sure i do <laughs> like, what do you what does this have to do with anything it's like oh it, sometimes sometimes you have to you have to answer with too stupid with stupid and that's how it works you know i feel like the person's like just projecting a little bit a lot of these people don't realize like a lot of the haters are just projecting a lot of their insecurities and kind of like you know, trying to take you down to their level a little bit. Um, I, I mentioned before, like, you know, a hater is always, always beneath you. Like, they're never... Do you see, like, friggin' Bill Gates or when Steve Jobs was around getting bothered by tiny little commenters? Like, no, they're, they're like people that are below them that are trying to bring them down to a level, so you don't even give them the time of day. But one of my favorite features that YouTube has that no other social media platform has and that is you click on those three little dots on the right you open up the settings or whatever and then you say hide user from channel and all you do is you click if wow. someone's a real <laughs> d-bag if someone's like you see a pattern with this guy constantly just being a shithead you click hide user from channel <laughs> which means they're not blocked they're still commenting on your videos but no one can see their comments you can't even see their comments so they're in like comment hell it's like a black mirror episode for them and they're just alone in their world just commenting and they think everyone's seen it but no one can that's one of my the best features that youtube has ever implemented that's a really interesting feature yeah it's it's literally black mirror <laughs> yeah they're just kind of venting on their own in your comment <laughs> section it's, it's really wild. and like they're helping the algorithm too man true <laughs> you know if okay say if YouTube goes to shit, there's like wow. a platform completely just, uh, what's the word I'm looking implodes. for? Implodes. Implodes. It just implodes. What would you do? Would you move over to TikTok? Would you move over to Vimeo? <laughs> Vimeo. Or would you just stop? Would Good you joke. just stop the whole thing? Yeah, Vimeo. Dude, I, you pay $250 a year to upload to their stupid platform. It's, it's, it's insane. Same. It's wow. Uh, but honestly, like, I don't know. I would just cry a little bit uh but because <laughs> it's such a big part of my life it's 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 like that's just the way it is you know i wake up i think about youtube and so if it just disappears one day i'm like oh damn i have a lot of a lot more free time first of all uh <laughs> second of all like yeah like what do i do now i mean i still have twitch but twitch is a fraction of, of what I do on YouTube, right? You, I do that. I think you do you do a lot more frequent streams. I, I I stream only only once a week, and even still, I sometimes cancel streams for the dumbest reasons because I just don't like feel up for it. Streaming's tough, well, I'm, man. I, I'm I'm. It's really tough because I think I've told you this before. Sitting in front of a computer for nine hours at your nine to five job, and then sitting in front of a computer for another nine hours for your YouTube job is like is really mentally challenging, especially streams, because you just have to be there for however many hours and entertain. Uh, but I think, I mean, Twitch is still going to be around, I guess. I guess logically, if YouTube disappears, then there's going to be a huge chunk of people moving to another platform. You kind of move with them. That's my logical answer uh, <laughs> to that idea. But um, I don't know. I don't know. I, Maybe I'll just focus on other things in life that aren't YouTube. <laughs> it's See, hard to say. So that's where I'm kind of like leaning at. Would you continue just like graphic design or would you continue in music? Like, um, let's get to know Bogdan and his full-time job. Because like, I know, the thing is, I know you're a graphic designer, 
by first of all with your thumbnails you don't do drop shadows <laughs> i know in like the no, graphic design no. world drop <laughs> shadows are frowned upon i know that dude <laughs> they're really bad i i never use a drop shadow feature like <laughs> this is this is nerd talk but if you want to do a shadow there's so many other better ways to do it than drop shadow but anyways uh yeah i mean i'm i've graduated last year so i've been at Ooh. my job for a year as a graphic designer thank you uh <laughs> as a graphic designer and it's it's been pretty pretty cool <laughs> it's like it's a job where i just kind of sit in front of a computer and make pretty pictures right and it's sometimes it's a bit mentally draining uh especially because like once again i'm sitting in front of a computer for hours uh, but it's a i'm very lucky to have this job in this industry because again it first of all it allows me to do something that i like doing second of all it allows me to work on youtube as well because there's a lot of in intersection between the two because like you said thumbnails uh youtube headers whatever twitch overlays like i do all that stuff myself and I, I i apply a lot of the knowledge that i've received uh from like graphic design experience and yeah it's uh it's really useful because like for example you're you're a guitarist you play guitar uh you use that experience in your reviews when you review guitar work and riffs and stuff so that's like everybody has their niche their interests and it's really important to know how to apply them properly into the content that you're making so exactly That's the way i'm looking at it exactly like yeah i know from the marketing world i did digital marketing and exactly, like yeah. yeah and i would do graphic design too but like i won't i'm not at your level i was like i forced myself to learn graphic design because like um my employer or something would ask me like oh like can you make this up for us i'm like i don't know how but i'll like look up a youtube video and then kind of fool around with photoshop and then i just kind of learned photoshop by doing a whole bunch of things like that and um but yeah i use all that experience towards like you know thumbnails and also like seo for you know making uh clickable titles and stuff but also like i feel like seo is not even that important for titles lately anymore like like i think it's more about just how clickable is the title it doesn't even matter if like the specific keywords are in there as much i don't know have yeah, you noticed that I too yeah, it's you, the best way to get views is like pick a song that everybody loves and then call it is this awful question mark? <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody's going to click they're like huh, what the hell? And then you're you love the song in the video and it's a kind of like a clickbait but yeah. Uh, you know I I love what Richard is doing. Richard Genre and his his titles and his thumbnails are so funny cuz it's it's always like punny, right? He always makes puns with with the titles. And some like something smart that he does uh, I, uh, with smaller bands, smaller artists, it's kind of hard to get reception views from from smaller names because nobody knows who they are. So something smart that he does is he doesn't name the band in the title, but he kind of like hints at what it sounds like, like the theme. I think that's very smart. I think it works really well. Uh, I've never done that personally. I, I always put the artist in the title. I just because i don't know consistency that, that yeah something like that but that's titles are really important yeah no <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned richards too because i noticed when he started doing a change to his titles and i'm like damn it's it is Dude, clickable started doing that yeah like it's, nick nocturnal is doing that as well like <laughs> yeah it's fuck, it's so clickable and like i've done that a couple times to myself i think the best title i've ever came up with was uh, spirit box kind of sounds like garbage now. I like question mark. <laughs> that, that is so good. That is so good. Oh my god. So many people were like pissed in the comments, but then like later watched my review and they're like, "Oh, I get it. You're talking about the band oh, garbage. garbage." Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, dude. Okay, we were talking about. I'm going back in the conversation a little bit. We were talking about like you know putting in nine hours on your full time job and then nine hours YouTube. How do you deal with burnout? How do you deal with your mental health? Because like I we don't have to delve into this if you don't want, but I do remember you taking a break a couple months ago and like I'm not sure exactly why, but like I feel like a lot of people don't realize, um, you know, from my own personal experience, YouTube is like a lot mentally you you're because you also said when you wake up, you think of YouTube 
I do too. You think of YouTube, you go to bed, you think of YouTube. It's not just putting up a video. It's like, there's so much more to that. You manage the community. Also, I'm trying to focus on other social media platforms, but also like you're looking at numbers and you get so swept up by all these things that it's just like, it's mentally just taxing. So I'm wondering like, what do you do to better yourself mentally and not feel burnout? Uh, I mean, considering the amount of breaks I have taken, it's probably, I'm probably not the best person to ask. But honestly, just I've I've started do, uh, I've started doing things outside of of um, of YouTube and, and work. I, I started going to the gym recently, um, oh. which really it really helps mentally. You know, when you do some other things outside of what you usually do, it's not directly like doing something about your YouTube creation. Uh, process whatever it's just doing something outside that helps you feel better about yourself and i feel like that affects both work and youtube so that's my short answer long answer um to just just like take breaks like you're not you're not a machine you're you we're always gonna burn out like that's just how humans are you know like no matter how how much you love the videos that you're making eventually you're going to start kind of hating yourself a little bit and need to take a little break. Like that's normal, I feel. So I, I think especially for people who are starting out um, and it's it's really tough starting out when you have like no basis or no like audience yet. It's really hard like putting so much work and then getting like 10 views and kind of just like, why am I doing this? Right? <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's just you're not a machine. Just take breaks do stuff that you like and i feel i feel that always works yeah i i agree but i also feel like youtube it just like doesn't like it when you take breaks too just like the it community does. the community does the community's like yeah take a break but youtube doesn't youtube's like oh you're taking a break we're going to stop <laughs> suggesting so your videos because you're not as consistent yeah. anymore so that's the problem like you're in this youtube cycle you gotta you're like a hamster just running on the, the youtube wheel just constantly so you kind of have to that keep putting true. I've seen people take breaks for like a month or two months, right? And then they come back at it. Then their views kind of plummet. Sure, they get some diehards. And then, but then they realize, oh man, the views are not the same. So then they take another break. Then they come back again. And then their views are still, you know, not as good as they once were. And then they just kind of yeah. stop doing YouTube. So that's the issue with taking long breaks. But, um, I, yeah, no, I do agree with you that taking breaks is hugely important. Um, but it's funny that you mentioned the gym because you know that I go to the gym too. So let's yes. go to the, let's go to the gym, man. Let's, uh, what if, <laughs> what if we just turn this into like a fitness, uh, duo, like YouTube channel. And then we just ended up being yeah. fitness influencer. <laughs> <laughs> that would, that would make us so much more money. It's insane. <laughs> oh, I know, dude. Uh, that's the thing. The metalcore buddy is <laughs> there's not a lot of metalcore money, but I was watching <laughs> There's this guy that I really like. His name is Jesse James West. He's a fitness influencer. And um, he was on a podcast and he was talking about his Google ad revenue. And like our ad sense is not a lot, you know, getting thousands to ten thousands of views. But if you're getting, you know, millions of views. OK, OK. So this yeah. guy <laughs> made in March of this year, eighty thousand dollars on just ad That's revenue. That's just insane. That's crazy. That's like a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of money. <laughs> and then he's also got like, you know, the Patreon and sponsors and all these other things. And like it, that, a, like a lot of these people, it's like not even their main income too. It's just like, it's just, it's insane. So yeah, the metalcore money, it, it, it's not a lot. Um, you know, I was talking about like uh, Jesse James West there, but like, what are some of your biggest inspirations when it comes to YouTubers? And like, this doesn't have to be music related. Who are some YouTubers that you just like and maybe even borrow some editing styles or something from? I mean, the like the the most obvious answer for me is probably PewDiePie because I've been watching him since before I knew how to speak English properly. Oh, really? <laughs> that guy has been a part of my life for a very long time. I used to always watch his. I still watch his videos. I think. Uh, do you follow PewDiePie at all? Uh, not so much, but I, I respect him. He's the man, I think. Yeah, like recently he he did the move to Japan and he he talked a little bit about content creation and how he just kind of he doesn't he retired from from his usual content and now he's just doing basically whatever he wants. And 
like that's such a power move because like the man has achieved everything on youtube and now he can do whatever the hell he wants he reviews books he films vlogs in japan it's like dude's living the dream and it's it's really inspiring like he, he's had a lot of controversies of course and uh over the years like he's been canceled a bunch of times but you know the, the way this guy is able to adapt to different eras of youtube you know, you know from gaming to like tiktok reactions to whatever the hell he's doing now it's like that's that's to me super inspiring and he's just he seems like a very genuine simple guy to me and um that's what i really always respected about him that he never really changed in my opinion because like i've been watching him since 2012 ish and to me it seems like the core character of him never really changed uh but more more specifically editing and like some of the humor uh, and whatnot i've been watching a lot of ludwig who's uh who's been blowing up on on, on twitch before now on youtube and yeah I, I watch him a lot he's uh he's probably currently my favorite content creator so definitely definitely another inspiration right there for me oh i've seen his face around but i never really watched his videos i just see his face and thumbnails and stuff he he did this like uh um, subathon like a couple of years back on twitch where he he would stream like for as long as people kept subbing so every sub would add like another couple of seconds and p people kept subbing and he ended up being live for like a month <laughs> really yeah it's it's insane maybe not a month couple of weeks but it was it was like one of the biggest twitch events of all oh time. my god the idea of live streaming for a couple of weeks yeah, sounds like torture no <laughs> like I, I say that as like it sounds like a bad thing for people who like watch our twitch streams or something but i think twitch is the hardest thing for me at least to do because you know the youtube videos at least we're just we're on our own time we make a videos if we screw up or something we can at least take nice little breaks but with live streaming you have to be on for like three four hours or whatever and um it's just it's a lot of energy um you know it, it takes a long time for you to be your natural self in front of camera because when i first started live streaming i was like worried like oh man i'm going to say stupid things i'm worried about slipping up but now like i don't care if i slip up i just do whatever i do my own thing and i think people like that the people just like it because you feel a little bit more humanized but um i just find the the live streaming to be the most taxing thing of all things and you know a personal story of mine is also my buddy uh, we call him Metal Bro. I don't know if you've seen him in some of my video. Oh yeah, you saw him. You saw him in person. Yeah. Yeah, I think I met him. Yeah, he was at, he was at the <laughs> air show with us. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he was doing like um, some live streaming too, and he was playing video games. And then he would like join in some of my streams too. And then you know some of my followers started following him. And then my followers now are asking like, "Oh, where's Metal Bro? I miss his live stream. Where is he? Is he going to come back?" And like, like. He just wants to play video games alone. They don't realize that playing video games and also talking to an audience, it's a lot. Like that's why like you're viewing it and you're not doing it yourself, right? Like you want to The thing is like when it comes to like video games, I don't do live stream video games cuz like that's that's my me time. That's my alone time. I want to just sit back, play some games. That's me just like in my solitude, but I know people come in for the music stuff anyway. Um yeah, I mean, one one really, uh, I guess, important thing about Twitch to understand is uh, I understood this when I started watching streamers because before I wasn't really watching a lot of Twitch. I was mainly watching like highlights on YouTube of, of Twitch streamers, right? And when you tune into stream, it's such a different vibe as opposed to highlights because highlights is all fast cuts, jump cuts, everything. And stream is just like, there's a lot of silence. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of like waiting pauses and it's like, I think it's once you understand that you don't have to be like hyper entertaining for all of three hours that you're streaming, like you're going to feel a lot better about streams. That's that's how I kind of um, was able to keep up with the length of the streams. But it's a it's it's a really tough um, it's Twitch is really tough. It's really hard. <laughs> it is uh, like um, I think Twitch streamers who just like play video games and stuff. I think that's a little bit more relaxing because you're at least like doing something and you're yeah. you know you don't have to you you don't have to talk really i think talking and reviewing or something is a little bit more taxing but um i think that's one thing that those streamers have upper hand on um a question like 
this is like not a smooth pivot in the slightest, but something I wanted to ask you about is that um, one of my favorite videos that you've ever made was getting to know you and your culture. So you made a video about Ukraine and I thought that was just like a really enlightening video about like, you know, learning your side of the story. And like to me, I am ignorant to the news because I don't watch the news. I stopped watching the news because ignorance is bliss for me. Um, I used to watch a lot of news and that's why I stopped watching it. But anyway, watching your video just was like enlightening and it also was a good way to see you on a more personal level. And um, I'm wondering how you feel about the feedback of that. And I know you've also been vocal about on Twitter about some of these things. And have you considered maybe even making another video about the topic? Because I know you're extremely passionate because it's your people and it's your culture. So just wondering how you feel about what's going on and if you would like to make a video or maybe even a second YouTube channel. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, politics, is, they're, they're everywhere around us, you know, you can't really escape them. But I, I, I kind of, that video that I made was, it, it was such a, such a strange video, because I made it a day before the whole thing kicked off. And in the video, I said, like, oh, I hope the war doesn't start. And then it started the next day, literally. So it's just, it's kind of an interesting, um, interesting to look back at that video and read all the comments i mean i've been mainly receiving a lot of support for that video i think it was just it, it, i mean it's kind of weird to say but i think that's like my most viewed video it's really unfortunate that that's that's the video that is the most viewed on my channel this year um but i, I have considered making another video but i'm kind of holding off of it uh for now i'm I want to make something kind of big, talk about a lot of a lot of stuff, not just like me sitting there one frame talking about whatever, like for five minutes, but actually make a like a video video about it. But that's a that's a really uh, I think that's a really tough piece of content that I need a lot of time to finalize. Um, like you said, uh, have I considered creating another channel for it? I mean, that's an interesting idea. I. I often find myself pretty passionate about politics and what's going on in the world. I feel like I would be able to talk about that as my main stream of content. Something to consider, I, something I haven't really thought about all that well. And um, yeah, it's just, I'll see, I'll see whatever, whatever, however, wherever it takes me. You know? <laughs> yeah. We'll see how it goes. But um, I do have plans of making another video about that situation and, Hopefully it comes out soon, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I think if you do tackle it, I think it would be a really good video because there's already the challenge in place of making the video you're already kind of mentioning. And um, some videos that I made, some of my most challenging videos ended up being my most like liked, like, you know, the Finn McKenzie one that I made. I didn't want to put that out there, but it, it was really, I felt very passionate about it and people really resonate with that video. Another one was my mental health video. Um, you know, I wanted to, obviously I've already mentioned mental health a few times on this podcast. So, because it's important to me. So, you know, putting that video out there, I'm like, oh shit, like I'm so vulnerable. I don't know. And then I did it and then people loved it. I'm like, okay, okay. So that's where I'm getting at with your video that once you do decide to do it and you know, I think um, I think people will really like it. Yeah, it's been surprising how how positively some of the pieces of content that I release are like positively accepted by people when I expect something completely opposite. So I think, uh, yeah, I totally relate to that. Yeah, and I, and I totally relate to mental health being important. I mean, mental health is such a I, I have a video on, on the back burner about mental health, but I just it's I couldn't get to it for such a long time but it's somewhere it's somewhere in the making <laughs> i know maybe one day exactly one day. <laughs> you don't want to be vulnerable because people have like a certain idea of you and if you showcase a little too much i don't know like i totally understand and that's why when i mentioned that video being one of the hardest i had to publish um i'm glad i did it but it wasn't easy it wasn't easy to do that um all right all right so Thank you for just kind of like taking the time here. We're at an hour. I still got some questions here, but um, yeah, of course. Sure we're going, away. <laughs> all right. So we got we're going to finish the podcast with some uh, fun questions. I got some 
fun questions like to ask you. And then after that, I like uh, fun. <laughs> well, I also asked my Discord for some uh, questions because they know that we were having a podcast, and so I got some of them to ask some questions. And um, by the way, for people who are listening, it's going to be moving to Patreon now because I thought that was a good idea to have extra perks. So sorry, Discord peeps, but Patreon is going to have that perk now. Okay. But okay. So for the, the fun question, numero uno, we got top three favorite bands. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, is there a time limit? Oh, my God. Um, probably, let's see, Linkin Park. Okay. I really love Linkin Park. To death. <laughs> Were you upset when I said hybrid theory? I've never listened to it fully. I was. But <laughs> at the same time, I'm, ex I, I'm excited. Uh, have you listened to it already? I th think. You yeah, I made album reactions to uh, yeah, Meteora too. You, I'm happy you got to experience it and like after such a long time. Okay. But yeah, Linkin Park. Okay. Um, currently, the Devil Wears Prada. Nice. Oh God, I love them so much. Um, what else? What else? I'm, it's, I'm, it's it's really hard. There's so many bands. There's too many bands. <laughs> they need to make less bands. Um, what if it's top five? Oh my god! That makes it harder. No, that that makes it harder. <laughs> no, <laughs> it doesn't have to be like you know ranked. It could be just like in that group, maybe. Okay, Lincoln Park, Silent Planet, The Devil Wears Prada, North Lane. And then Parkway Drive. No. <laughs> no. Okay. I used to be. Not anymore. Not anymore. I've that kind new of album, fallen yeah. off of them. I, you know, I've been, I've been really enjoying, um, I've been really enjoying uh, Era. Oh. I, I think I've been sleeping on them for a long time, and I've recently rediscovered my love for them. So, <coughs> Era as my fifth pick. There nice, you know. and they're such good dudes too. They are. They're oh, obviously, they, we they're had a, the best. Yes. Yeah, we had a good time hanging out with them. All right, cool, cool. Um, I think Lincoln Park is the biggest surprise for me. I didn't know that they meant that much to you, because you so just much. do reactions to the new bands, right? So it's cool to hear you and your love for like the old bands. Dude, I've been I've been digging so much new metal lately, like early two thousands. I've I've been listening to Deftones, Corn, Limp Bizkit. I'm not ashamed to admit it. It's <laughs> such a cool era of music. I've been really listening to it lately so yeah that was one uh, genre of music that i couldn't get into that's why i never listened to slipknot and stuff or corn um but oh also deftones holy shit i fucking love deftones now i never really properly <laughs> gave them a listen even though i saw them live back in the day but yeah they're great um okay top three favorite movies <sighs> jesus christ you're my god you're these are the hardest questions solutions. dude i asked They're you about hardest. ukraine i asked you about mental health but talk about movies oh shit <laughs> <laughs> okay uh movies 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 i really love the shining by stanley Kubrick. nice i think that's nice. like one of my favorite movies just because of how revolutionary it is i don't want to get into it because i'm a nerd no no no. i get it dude get into it i'm a nerd too it. man so famously this movie has i think this movie was the first use of a of a like a proper gimbal of a camera and so it it they were able to achieve like revolutionary like shots, shots. At yeah the time and like running through the the maze and everything and the camera is like super smooth you weren't able to achieve that before but they did it with that movie and it was like holy shit that's why it still um, holds up yeah absolutely and i mean the actors in it phew, jack oh, nicholson yes yeah. yeah. incredible um, I really love uh, Blade Runner. I'm gonna put both of them, like the first one and the uh, the 2049, in one because I really love those movies purely visually. I I think the story is really good in both of them. I think that's like one of the most underrated stories ever told in cinema. But visually, it's probably the most the best looking movies I've ever seen in my life, especially the second one. So if you if you love the visual spectacle, go watch Blade Runner. Dude, that's so sick! Um, I, your movie taste so far is awesome. I love. Uh, I never saw the first Blade Runner, but the second one, um, yeah, it was shot amazingly too, and just like yeah, the visuals and uh, CGI and everything was just like incredible. Also, the music too was really cool. Yeah, and for my last pick, I'm gonna go a little. I'm gonna go a little weird. Shrek two. <laughs> I. Dude, unironically, it has one of the best climaxes 
of all time like that that dance scene at the end with like when they're all fighting when they're storming the castle you know it's it's crazy shrek 2 is a masterpiece but yeah those are my three favorites <laughs> oh dude i i don't remember shrek 2 it's been so long but i did watch shrek 1 like a year ago and <laughs> it, it was like surprisingly like a lot better than how i remembered it like i can see where you're going with this man shrek 2 is a masterpiece you should rewatch it as soon as possible <laughs> i'm more like uh i'm more like toy story and like uh wally if we're talking yeah, about like animated Dude, movies. Wally is such a good movie. Oh. I've never gotten into Toy Story, but Wally is my. Sh I love Wally so much. I watched that movie like ten times. Yeah, like I love how like the first forty five minutes of that movie is just like no like words. I don't know. I think it just visually uh, just does so much. It's also very scary that it's a realistic outlook in our future. But <laughs> oh, I know, right? <laughs> I know. It's so true. Oh. Um. Okay. Now the last one of these uh, top threes. Top three favorite foods. Oh, okay. Uh, that should be easy. Well, this one's easy. I really love. I really love pizza. I think. I mean, it's a very mellow answer. I know everybody says pizza, but pizza is like one of the best inventions of of humankind. Mm -hmm. It's like bread with shit on top of it, and you can cut it into pieces and eat it without. You know, like it's crazy. It's it's a really it's a really amazing invention. Yeah. I love pizza. I'm a basic I love pineapple on pizza. Yeah. There we go. Okay. 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 We have common ground. Good. Want to go? Want to go to the gym and then afterwards maybe get some <laughs> pineapple pizza, Hawaiian pizza, Hell and yeah. <laughs> watch some Blade Runner. See what up, bro. Sounds like a great idea. Listen <laughs> some North Lane as it's going. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> yeah, let, let's film it and make some content around it. People will be like, "What the fuck are we watching?" <laughs> it's gonna be like a four-hour-long video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, another two favorite foods. Hmm. I really like so pierogies. Have you ever had pierogies? Oh hell yeah, dude! I oh, was yeah. a I was a fat kid growing up, man. I ate like everything. <laughs> My like I don't have like quality food taste. I'm a basic bitch. I like pizza, burgers, wings. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. And yeah, pierogies with cheese and potatoes. Mwah, oh my god, phenomenal! Sour Especially cream. homemade ones. Yeah, with sour cream. That's that's a very important deal detail. I want to learn how to make pierogies like like my mom and then make them and then eat them every day. Like and from always. scratch? Yeah, like they're they're kind of easy to make. All you need is just to make the dough and then put stuff inside and then kind of like True. It, it just there. sounds like a lot of work. I'd rather just like It is a lot of work. Buy a but, bag of frozen the, ones. Yeah. Th those are never as good as the homemade ones. I'll be honest, but they're still all right. I believe it. Uh, and then the last food, um, ooh, it's kind of tough. I I really enjoy uh, burritos. I I love burritos. Oh, qué bueno, qué bueno. Hell yeah! It's 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 also a genius food invention because it's just a bread with a bunch of shit inside, and you hold it, and it's nothing's falling out. It's amazing. I love it. You're you're a carb boy, aren't you? You like your carbs. Uh, I do. <laughs> that's why I've been going to the gym. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that's the best energy for the gym anyway. Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Good answers. I can uh, agree with the majority of those. But now, let's end the podcast with the viewer questions. So, this is taken from my Discord, but my first question, this is from Relica Monique Simp. Uh, he, this guy really likes money <laughs> from Relica. Pretty sure, pretty sure that guy's also in my Discord because I saw that name. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, he's a good guy. Um, and Relica is fucking awesome too. Also, money because oh, yeah. she's super cool. Um, yep. he says my first question is why are Bogdan and Metalburb the two sexiest YouTube reactors in the scene? I need to know their hair care routine. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna avoid the first part of that question because I'm a humble person. Yeah, good, good answer. But but you're not wrong. Uh, but second, second <laughs> for that question, um, I just wash it sometimes and I don't really put any product in it. That's my routine. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, all right. We got Joe Schmo, AKA Dorbin Glorbin. What album have you bought or streamed solely based on the cover art alone and loved it? Solely based on the cover art. That's an interesting question. I thought it's so too. To... Cover arts are so important in music. It's crazy. 
Have you seen the new August Burns Red cover art? Yeah, I like it. Some people are mixed about you like it. it. I I really don't. I really don't like it. It's, well, I won't yeah, say that I, I love it, but I feel like it's consistent with their look, and it looks a little darker and heavier. Fair enough. I mean, I just I just think that um, I've had this conversation with Scene Fiend. Um, he's a fellow fellow creator, really cool guy. Oh yeah, he, he's awesome. His his music project. He's been using AI art for his like music videos, and he's been and he's also talked to me a little bit about the August Burns Red and he, to quote him, he said like, that's, it looks lazy because it kind of looks like they just put one prompt in and that's like, they took the first best thing. And I kind of agree with that. I enjoy when, uh, when they use just real artists for that, but that's besides the point. So to come back to the question, um, I really like, you know, have you listened to Zealand Ardor this year? No, but I, I've heard a couple songs that are weird. They are strange, and I, it's not particularly my kind of music, but I, I'm fascinated by the cover art. It's just like two hands. <laughs> yep, 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 yeah. They have the two. It's like black, black and white, right? The, yeah, it's it's super simple, and I for some reason, it's it's really stuck with me, and I'm always like, whenever I listen to their music, you're like, oh, that's the that's that cover art, yeah. I don't know. I I guess that's the album. That's my pick for that. <laughs> I really a, love black and white covers. They're very effective sometimes. Really, eh? For me, I love like landscapes. And actually I mentioned the band earlier, but Amia Venera Landscape. They got like this weird dark hill and it's like green tint. And like off in the distance you just see like a little smokestack. I don't know, it's just something a little bit like unsettling and mysterious. Those are album arts that I kind of gravitate towards. It's really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Evie Nuggets, a.k.a. Danny, what's the first band that got you into Deathcore? And I think he said this because he knows you're not a big Deathcore person. I feel like I already know the answer, but take it away, Bogdan. Is your answer Whitechapel? No, no, it wasn't. No? Okay, then you're not correct because it's Whitechapel. Oh, I, I thought it was I, Fit for Autopsy. That's a good one. But Whitechapel got me first, I'm pretty sure. I think Mark of the Blade was like the, the first album that I listened to by them, and I was a fan ever since. So that's like the first Deathcore album that I liked. Fit for an Autopsy is fucking amazing, though. So both good answers. I'll, I'll take two. Whitechapel and Fit for an Autopsy. There you nice. Go. I know. Um, dude, Kin was such a good album. It, like Whitechapel has always been a band that I've known about. Like I never really bothered listening to them too much. I wasn't crazy into the Chuggy MySpace stuff but their new albums i think are just like really really good stuff very different but i'm a fan good um okay i got to pull this one up on my phone but psychonaut tom says you mentioned many times that you have ukrainian roots do you often check ukrainian music out can you recommend some bands or artists other than ginger slava ukraini ukraini hell yeah okay that's a good <coughs> question because there is actually one band that dropped an album uh this year uh, a Ukrainian band who's actually they're on tour in, in the US right now they're not coming to Toronto though which kind of sucks but uh, it's Space of Variations I, I really oh. love their new album have you listened to it? I've heard of them I've seen that name around you should listen to their music because it's such a interesting blend of like pure bread metal core and like electronic music a little bit it's really it's really nice really unique I love their melodies uh so if I were to recommend one single Ukrainian band, <clears throat> that's the one I would go with, Space of Variations. Gotcha. I might have heard them on Twitch because I definitely recognize that name. Um, I think I've seen you mention before, but like all the times that you like you hear music on Twitch and like people like, oh, like I'm, we've already heard this song or something. You already heard this song. I'm like, I can't keep up with all the damn music I check out. Holy crap. True. <laughs> so I probably have already heard Space of Variations, to be honest, um, but I don't remember it. So I got to check out more. Um, Sam, the man says very thought provoking question right here. So get mind blown Coke okay. or Pepsi. Coke. I mean, <laughs> oh, hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. Pepsi's just not quite there. You know, it's that's it is what it is, man. <laughs> there we go. And I think this is actually the last one. Um, Hunter, Hunter, AKA baby. He says, mm -hmm. What inspired Hardcore to be involved in the metal reaction game? Like, what are some reasons that made him want to put metal content for the metal community? I feel like we kind of 
already talked about this. He also yeah. says, and also, what would he be currently doing if he had never had interest in metal or even discovered? I feel like we kind of already touched on this, but maybe elaborate a little bit more if you want. Yes. To, to add to the first point, of course, I was really like kind of inspired by Truant because like I feel like that's where a lot of us <laughs> stemmed from. But um, another huge thing for me to start a reaction channel was I I was very lonely in my music taste growing up. I didn't have a lot of friends that listened to metal. And I feel like that's so true for a lot of people who watch us. And like you're nodding so clearly you can relate to uh, it's. Yeah, you just kind of find that audience elsewhere. And in, in, in our case, it's YouTube. You put out your thoughts and it's like all these people are listening to these songs with you and you have that kind of relationship and connection. And it's, that's like one of the best things of that about YouTube, just having that those people that love the same music as you do. And it's, it's fucking amazing. And for the second part of that question, um i'd be sad but i'll be probably doing just graphic design <laughs> that's all i can totally relate and talking about like you know not having people to talk to in person and also starting off with truant we're both the exact same in that regard but since doing this this is a question for me but like have you gone recognized like outside of youtube just like walking around yeah yeah especially on live shows like specifically on live shows i don't think i've ever been <laughs> recognized outside because I'm not, I'm definitely not that big yet, but live shows for sure. I've, I've been recognized and it's, it's super cool because, you know, I get to meet all these just random strangers and make friends with them because of my content. And, you know, I've, I've talked a lot to a bunch of these people and like, you know, I, I talk to them regularly whenever I bump into them on the show. It's like, it's like you got your show buddies, you know, funny enough in Stockholm, there have been so many people that recognize me and I was kind of surprised by it. But then I realized that like a massive chunk of my audience is from Europe. A oh yeah. Active audiences from YouTube, people who like constantly comment and stuff. It's really tough on, on Twitch schedule cause I have to stream earlier, but. <laughs> oh wow. My audience is primarily American. Yeah. My, mine is too, but I feel like the Act, especially discord community i feel is mostly mostly european for me people who are active in conversations and whatnot so wow that's yeah. interesting that is pretty strange and <laughs> it must be really cool going to a different country and then also people get, like recognizing you in other places like it's, it's like what <laughs> it's so weird it's, it, i got man the weirdest like interaction uh I don't know, like a month ago, this guy was like near where I lived in like this building and he was going down in the elevator and I needed to go up. So I clicked up and then he gets in and he's going down, but then I'm waiting and then he does something. He fumbles something and he, he opens the elevator door again. And I'm like, oh, are you guys going up or are you guys going down? He's like, oh, uh, no, we're going down. He's like, wait, metal burp? And <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. And I saw he was wearing a Laura Shore hoodie. I'm like, yeah, yeah, Laura Shore, right? He's like, yeah, yeah, I really like Laura Shore. Hey, well, I love your videos. And like, before you even could finish the sentence, the elevator door closed. <laughs> that's a funny, that's a funny interaction. Bro, yeah. I feel like that's just your appearance. I feel like you're very recognizable. Like your long hair, long beard and everything. Like, yeah, well. yeah. And also like, you know, you go to shows and stuff and people still have a hard time. Like, is that actually who I think it is? Because like seeing somebody in person, like, oh, that, I didn't expect them to be that tall or I didn't expect that person to be that short or something. Have you ever had those like when people kind of you kind of notice that someone's looking at you and they just keep like just looking at you from time oh, to time? Oh, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. It, it's, don't say hi. <laughs> I know. That's the thing. And then people also think that you don't want to be bothered, which I get. But at the same time, like I think what we do is the metal reactions where we don't have people to talk to. So it's the reason why we started these YouTube channels. So like when I go to a show, like, come talk to me. Like, let's talk about music and shoot the shit. Like, don't be yeah. worried. Everyone's like, like, they're always like thinking about my time. Like, okay, like I don't want to bother you, so I'll leave you alone. Like, no, no, no. You're not bothering me, man. I can I can talk. Yeah. It's like I've got nothing else to do at the show. I might as well talk to people, you know? It's like bother yeah. me. Bother yeah. me all you want if you ever see me in public. Well, I might bother you for you're going to make them suffer in Dayseeker. Yep. Okay. So there's a bunch of concerts in November. We're also going to Silent Planet and Plotting You. 
Shit, I totally forgot That's about that one. Same week. It's like within two days of each other. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Damn. I gotta start interviewing these bands super quick so I can get connections in because I think the Dayseeker one is like sold out, right? So I gotta, I gotta figure my way in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So you started a podcast, you know, you can interview everyone. <laughs> exactly. That I I'm only doing this just so I can get into these shows, man. That's the only reason. Um. But. Bogdan, dude, thank you so much for your time. I'm actually quite surprised that I was able to have a conversation with you for this long because my voice is not perfect. But, um, man, for a first podcast, this was awesome. This was awesome, man. You did great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't fumble too much. But, guys, I'm sure you all know who Bogdan is. If you don't, follow his YouTube, follow his Instagram, follow his Twitter, follow his Twitch. You know, he makes daily content. The dude is an absolute machine. He is super fast. Anytime a new song drops, you better believe that he's on it right away. Did I miss anything? No, you got it perfectly. All right. <laughs> well, dude, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. But enjoy the rest of your night. You too. And you too. <laughs> Peace. All right.